Hello, I'm Axel, and Loki and I are back to look at the various options for customizing the HipFilm interface. Version 14 of the software includes some improvements in this regard, which we are sure you will find useful. No project file is needed, and the techniques will be identical in HipFilm Express 14 and HipFilm Pro 14. So boot up your version of the software if you want to follow along, and let's get started. The HipFilm interface is made up of multiple sections called containers and you can drag the dividers between them to change their size. Each container holds one or more panels with tabs. Click any tab to show that panel. Drag any tab to rearrange their order or to move that panel to a different container. Each panel has a hamburger menu with controls to close the panel, float the panel into a window separate from the main interface, or access help. And each container also has a hamburger where you can float the entire container or open new panels into it. So if you ever accidentally close a panel, oh no, where is my controls panel? I'm panicking, I'm losing my mind. How can I ever live without it? It's not a big deal. Just open the menu for whichever container you want it in and add it back. Any panels that aren't currently visible can be added to the interface using the container menus. We can also manage our panels from the window menu. Some panels are not listed in the menu because they are permanent, they're always visible, and they can't be hidden. When you add a panel from this menu, it opens at the right side of the interface, and you can drag the tab to add it to whichever container you want. Or, if you want to keep it in its own container, you can reposition the entire container using the drop zones. Drag near any edge of the interface, and this line that appears indicates where the panel will be added. Drag into the center of any existing container, and you will see four drop zones marking each edge of the container. Drop the tab on one, and the container is split, placing the container you're dragging on the chosen side. The window menu also provides access to the two main screens, Back to Home to visit the home screen, or Back to Edit to return to your project. But Knowing the key commands, Control-1 for Home and Control-2 for Edit, is often a more convenient way to switch between those screens. Also in the Window menu, there is a submenu of Workspaces. Each workspace is a preset interface layout, optimized for a specific task. You can perform any task in any workspace you want, but changing the interface based on what you're doing can be very helpful. For example, the editing workspace focuses on the panels needed for editing, using almost all of the available screen space for the trimmer, viewer, and timeline panels. The compositing workspace, on the other hand, removes the trimmer to make more room for effects and controls, which you are more likely to use while compositing. So, based on what task you are preparing for, you can quickly adjust the interface to that task by selecting the appropriate workspace. You can also create your own workspaces. So once you get the interface customized just the way you like it for editing, select Save Workspace, give it a name, and it is added to the list of workspaces for you to use at any time. Then you can rearrange the interface how you like it for compositing or creating effects or any other task and save those as well. After that, switching between your workspaces is much faster than customizing all the panels each time you are changing tasks. And you can delete any of your custom workspaces from this menu as well. In case you forget to add a space or otherwise misspell something and want to delete it before anyone notices, <laughs> that would be embarrassing. The built-in workspaces cannot be deleted. That covers the methods for directly manipulating the interface, I think, but there are a few more interface options at File, Options, Interface. Who would have guessed? These options differ slightly between the Windows and Mac versions of the software. The first option on Windows is Enable High DPI Scaling. If you use a high DPI display and want HitFilm to obey your settings for desktop scaling, enable this option. Turn it off if you want HitFilm to ignore your scaling. Show Quick Actions in Menu Bar toggles the icons for Open, Save, Undo, and Redo. The keyboard shortcuts for those commands are very common, so you might not ever use those icons and feel that you could do without them. The Hide Full Screen Preview option applies to setups with multiple displays. 
If you have one of your displays set to show a full screen preview, enabling this option means that when you switch from HipFilm to another application, the full screen preview is hidden, leaving that display available for use with other programs. And finally, on Mac systems, you will have an option to use the native menu bar. The default layout matches the Windows software, but switching to the native menu bar might be more comfortable for some Mac users who prefer the traditional Mac top menu system. But it does also mean that the software will not exactly match our video tutorials, which might be a factor you want to consider as well. Hey guys, Kirsty here and welcome to our new comment of the week section. Mr. Spawn says, I don't know what's going on over there at FX Home the last year or so, but it's like everyone just unanimously decided, let's take our product to the next level, and they just keep pumping out awesome update after awesome update. Cheers, Mr. Spawn. Leave us a comment down below to be in with a chance of being in our next YouTube video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this information helpful. If you are new to HitFilm and want to learn more about using the editing tools, the video linked on screen now is a good next step. Please subscribe if you want to benefit from our future videos as soon as they are released, and I'll see you next time.